Welcome everybody, my name is Doragon. Sony have just announced their revamped PlayStation Plus, so it's time for me to give you, well, some information and my knee-jerk reactions, eh? So what have PlayStation announced today? Well, today is the 29th of March, 2022. So if you are watching this in the future, this is the day that it all happened. Essentially, they have announced what has been rumored for months. It was known as Project Spartacus internally, and it's been announced as PlayStation Plus. Yeah, they've not changed the name. Uh, they've given it three tiers rather than just the one tier previously, and each tier comes with additional benefits. So you have the tier one, which is essential, tier two, which is called extra, and tier three, which is called premium. They all do different things. They all have the pros, they all have the cons. So let's quickly run through them and see if they're gonna be of any use to you or me. PlayStation Plus Essential is what we know as PlayStation Plus right now. It's a 50 pound a year subscription fee. For that, you get access to your online gaming, exclusive discounts on the store, two to three games per month across PS4 and 5, with the odd times such as March 2022 getting a fourth game, and you get your cloud saves so that you can transfer between consoles dead easily or even remote play if you're playing on a PC elsewhere. That's it. No changes otherwise, it works exactly the same as PS Plus does today. I'm happy with PS Plus, generally. Um, there's a few months where it's like, ah, oh, I've already got those games or those games don't interest me, but generally I'm happy with the way PS Plus works and what my money goes towards, so I don't see any problem with keeping that level in there as an option for people, especially with the increased cost of living. Not having an area that goes above and beyond I actually think is fantastic because it means people can continue to choose that option, still play online with their friends and not be any worse off from their pocket. The second tier, the middle tier is called PS Plus Extra. Now this gives you access to 400 games instantly. These 400 games come across PS4 and PS5 titles from all developers across the industry, so you do get access to those PlayStation Studios titles, the likes of God of War, the likes of The Last of Us and Uncharted, the likes of things like Ghost of Tsushima, Infamous, and Ratchet and Clank, along with your big third-party titles, things like Marvel's Avengers, Ghost Runner, and things like that. So, plenty of games from across the industry to get your teeth into all available via cloud streaming on this particular option. You can, of course, also download these titles to your PS4 or 5 console, and this still works with your cloud gaming via PS Now on your PC. PlayStation Plus Premium is kind of like PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now knitted together as they stand right now. But there are a few benefits and additions. Now, as it stands, I have both of those services right now, so I pay 90 pounds a year to get PS Plus and PS Now. For that 90 pounds, I get access to 750 games in the library from the PS3 era all the way through to the PS5 with the odd PS2 game thrown in. And I can play all of those titles on the cloud or anything outside of PS3 era games I can download onto my console and play that way. Premium is doing a couple of additional things. So it's offering you all of that that I've just outlined it's costing you £10 more, so £99.99 £99 per year, so 100 quid. Sounds like a lot of money, but you're then also getting access to PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PSP titles. Things we have not had access to outside of those original consoles previously. There is a reason that this is still in full working order. So to have access to that on one console, on my PlayStation 5, under my TV. I think that's great. However, PlayStation Now is only available in three or four global locations. So it's available in Europe, North America, uh, Japan, and a couple of other areas in Asia. But most other geographical regions where PlayStation Plus exists, PlayStation Now doesn't. So what happens there? Well, in that case, you pay less and you get a service called PlayStation Plus Deluxe. Basically offers you 
pretty much the same service except you're gonna miss out on PlayStation 3 titles and everything is downloadable to your console or even your PC so that you can play there. That's kind of big. Now, Sony do go on to say that they will be looking at rolling out and changing their cloud gaming options. They're not calling it PlayStation Now anymore, they're calling it their cloud gaming options. What that means, we don't know. We don't have any more information upon that. But we do have hints from across the industry. Stadia have just released Immersive Cloud for Gaming, which is essentially a business-to-business -business sales program where anybody can buy Stadia's operating systems, rebrand them as their own, and put them out into the world. So we could have PlayStation first-party titles on our phones, on our tablets, on our PCs, on our web browsers, wherever we so fancy. But they're of course gonna bundle that up as their own thing if they went that route. They have a great cloud gaming infrastructure already. They just need to roll it out to other global regions. So get on it, Sony. And we know that they can build a good PlayStation app. Look at the Remote Play app. Look at the PlayStation app right now. They're both fantastic at a cloud gaming one or add cloud gaming into PlayStation Remote Play. Perfect. Gamers are paying, gamers are playing. What more could you ask for? So what's the upshot, what are my thoughts? It's an announcement, but it's not an in-depth announcement. There's not like anything game-changing here. Like I say, the absolute premium tier, the absolute top tier is what I essentially already have. It's just adding other generations and other consoles into the service to make it even better for the money that I'm already paying. I have no qualms with that. I'm already paying that £100 per year to Sony for PS Now and PS Plus as is. So to get a little bit extra for it is absolutely fine. I do like the fact that we've got three tiers of it so that we can choose what best suits our finances at any particular time, especially with the cost of living crisis that the UK is definitely going through and much of the rest of the world is going through. I think that's an important thing so that people can continue to game because we need our hobbies, we need our downtime to be able to operate at the best we can the rest of the time. So to have that available is just great. I don't think it's going to be pushing the envelope just yet. What they're doing right now is consolidating what they already have and they are looking to advance that in the future. We have seen Sony and Xbox implement things and then the other person pick it up and run with it further in the past. Sony implemented cloud gaming first, xCloud went much further. Xbox implemented achievements first, PlayStation went much further. And then the other side plays catch up and overtakes. And that's how the industry grows. Competition, innovation. Personally, I see this as a very good thing for us, the consumer. It's not changing a huge amount immediately, but it is laying the groundwork to change loads in the future. And I think that's amazing personally. But when you've got something with this little information, it's one of those that only time's gonna tell if it's gonna be a good thing, if it's gonna be a major positive for the industry. I hope it will. And I'm really looking forward to the cloud aspect rolling out and moving further in the future but I don't think we can make any snap judgments right now. I will keep covering this, and especially when it launches here in the UK, I will be getting that premium subscription because it's essentially exactly the same as I already have. So I'll jump on that, I will give it a test, I will make a video for you guys on what it's actually like, and then we can all report back and say, hey, how we're all feeling. In the meantime, I think it's pretty good. I think it's a good consolidation. I think it's a good framework for building for the future. It's about what they do with that future hereafter though. There needs to be a little bit of innovation from the PlayStation side because things have been very stagnant in their subscription services in the last few years. So any change is welcome. And if that promotes further change and better change, we as the consumers are gonna be better off across the board. But what do you guys think? Is this what you wanted to hear? Is it what you expected to hear? Were you hoping for something, say, more akin to Microsoft's xCloud and Game Pass Ultimate? 
let me know in the comments section down below. In the meantime though guys, your viewership has been fantastic today. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this completely unscripted knee-jerk reaction to the announcement. Normal drill, please, if you have enjoyed the content, adding to that uh, subscription count, that would be a major plus for me. I'd love to see that like count grow and definitely hear from you guys in the comments section down below. But otherwise, your viewership is more than enough for me. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Doragon. These are my knee-jerk reactions on the PlayStation Plus announcement in March 2022. And until next time, guys, have yourselves a fantastic day and take care.